Okay, so if you go up into the uh, creation tab here, and while we're still in uh, helpers, we're going to select a dummy. We're going to go to a top view. We're going to come out to our point helper here, and we're going to draw from this cross section here our dummy about so big and we'll use our align tool to align it so that it's exactly where it needs to be on the dummy we'll go X Y and Z and go OK and now we're just going to drag it back over and we're just going to eyeball it and that's fine now we're going to shift drag that dummy over to the other side as a copy. I'm going to just eyeball that again and that looks fine. And so what we have is, is that array there where we have our point helper in the center and then we've got our two dummies on either side. And what we want to do is select our right eyelid and we want to come into our motion tab, slide to the top and in the rotation constraint we're going to add a controller and we're going to add orientation constraint and go OK and down the bottom here we're going to keep initial offset and we're going to add orientation target and we're going to click this dummy. Now we're going to go add our orientation target again, just deselect that. Now you'll see what happens as I rotate that object, it rotates the eyelid. And just before we go any further, we're going to link this dummy to the main controller, and we're going to link this dummy to the main controller, and that way they will stay with the main controller as we go and you'll notice that the eyelids stay exactly where they're supposed to until we rotate this object. So we've got our other eyelid here, we'll do the same process, highlight rotation, open the uh, controller, assign orientation constraint, click OK, slide down, add orientation, uh, keep initial offset, add orientation target and click this dummy. So now we have both objects wired and I can select both of those and we can do blinks and we can even add some expression um, you know make make the can uh, character angry so you can see the power that, that that's added to the uh, to the eye controls and what we want to do is make sure that these can't be rotated in ways that are detrimental to the uh, to the look of the objects. So if we go into our hierarchy, and one thing we don't need to do is rotate it around like this, which is on the Z rotation axis. So if we go to link information in our hierarchy tab, we can lock the Z rotation, and you'll notice. If I, if I just bring up local transform here, the Z rotation axis has disappeared. As I switch it on and off, it appears and disappears. Same for this uh, dummy over here, the Z rotation. And we also don't want to rotate the look at constraint as well. Uh, we don't want to rotate the look at constraint around here as well. So we'll lock the Z on, on that one as well. Or is it, is it the Z? No, it's the Y. So on that one, it's the Y rotation. And uh, we probably don't want that either. And we could probably use that because it'll allow us to blink. We can just select the center controller to, to do blinks. And then we can select our edge, uh, our singular controllers to do winks and, uh, and squint one eye or or whatever so so on the larger uh, main controller that one's fine but we don't want the Z rotation 
So just lock the Z rotation and then we've only got the one available to us. So we've got movement in our eyes, we've got blinks, and we have singular control that also has some uh, dip varying attitudes that we can, we can give it as well. So that's a very simple uh, eye rig for, for I mean, it, you don't really require all the modeling that we've done. If you do have a character that just has a very simple map, uh, maybe even a gradient map, uh, map to a sphere uh, to give you an eye, um, to give you an eye design, then you could always use this rig to, uh, to control the eyes. And uh, it's a very handy rig um, for eye controls. Very simple, very handy rig for eye controls. Okay, so we'll bring our uh, character back out. Uh, unhide the body there. Unhide the, uh, the set, the teeth. We'll get it all unhidden. Uh, we'll give the character a little bit of... Um, well, that's probably... Notice there I can move that. I don't really want to be able to move that because I want it to stay exactly where, it's, where it is relative to our main controls. So I can also lock the move controllers for it. And while we're here, we can even lock the scale controllers for it. So let's lock all the move and the scale controllers for those. And for the larger one, we can, uh, oh, it's already got its scale controllers locked, which is good. And so we have our move, our look at constraints. And then we have, take those. Take those. Okay, everything's uh, everything's working fine then. Fine there now. And we'll give him a little bit of little bit of cutesy sort of side slanting eyelids there. And what we might do is just switch our environment to a black and we'll change our direct light. We'll, instead of direct, we'll go, we'll slide it up and we're going to change it to a spotlight. And we're going to bring in, we'll open all tabs there, we're going to bring in the hotspot. Just winding this in. And we're just going to go to a light view, views direct 01, even though it's not a direct anymore. We'll actually rename it to key light. And we're going to just, while we're in the light view, we can open up our, we'll probably leave the inner one there. We'll slide in a little bit on the, uh, on the inner fall off and the outer fall off will probably bring a little bit more up. We're going to arc it up a little bit. Probably move it, move it slightly forward a bit. I'm going to go to a front view and hit P. And just sort of using the perspective, using the perspective arc rotate tool. We go a little lower, something like that. Now while we're in a perspective view, we can go views, create camera from view, and that creates a new camera so that we can we can go off to other views now and we'll always come back hitting hitting C, we can come back to that camera. And uh, we'll just give him a quick render. And he's looking pretty good. Um, now our base, our ground plane, I'm just going to bring up my V-Ray properties because I've got it set as a matte object. And I'll just undo those settings so that it's a renderable object now. And that's working nicely. And uh, what we can do, you'll notice that it shows me the outside 
outside of this this ground plane and if i had it going off to infinity it would still show and it's because we have an ambient light and the ambient light is illuminating it so what we can do is actually bring the ambient light over to roughly where the character is and then we can switch on the fall off the uh, attenuation so if i go far attenuation and just go show it gives me these two rings now the outside ring is as far as the light will affect. So if I put it out here towards the edge of the ground plane, and then I use the inner one, if I, sh if I move it all the way in to zero, and then click use, now if I render, you'll see that it falls off. It, still it will still appear in the alpha channel, because alpha channels do not care about lighting. They only care about um, the objects that are in the scene, and they will always show the true object in the scene. But the lit version actually has that alpha channel uh, moving. Uh, that alpha channel is, is still there. The, the, lit, the lit version won't. It'll fall off and sort of disappear into black over there. So we might need another light on him. Um, I'm just I'm, what I'm trying to do is get away get away without having to use global illumination on this one um, because this is uh, the lighting I'm sort of giving you at the moment is something that you can pretty much do with standard lighting uh, without V-Ray and what we're going to do is set up a new light and this is a kicker or a um, uh, a backlight and bring up lights we're going to go a target spot and given that our camera is here and we've got our key light here we'll probably put it back here and just go to that that view so it's that spot there and we're just going to move it up to about there we're going to open it up a little bit and where is it where is it here we go hot spot just going to open the hotspot up so that the whole character's in the in the uh, in the effect there. And what we're going to do is um, do an include exclude. So up here near the shadow parameters, we're just going to go exclude, and we're going to exclude the ground plane because we don't want that kicker light, that that backlight, to affect the ground plane. And then we're just going to arc it up a little bit just so that it's going to shine across his shoulders a little bit we go back to a camera uh, we're going to increase that probably put it up to about 0 0.8 and uh, we won't, won't worry about shadows for now we might need them but we'll, we'll see how he looks and that's that's looking a bit better we've got a little bit of illumination around the edge here but I think that the light can come around a little bit more so just go back into that spotlight view, bring it around, something like that. Go back to camera. And that's working pretty nicely. Um, and the probably only other one we're probably going to need here is a bit of a front fill light. So just go to a front view. We're going to put in a free direct. We're going to go to a top view. We're going to move it back. And then we're going to scale up the hotspot and the fall off. And just go back to a front view. So he's, he's in that scene. He's looking, looking fine there, like he's encapsulated in this fill light here. We're going to switch off specularity. And we're going to give it about a 0.25, maybe give it a little bit of a bluey color. And no shadow. And we'll go back to our camera view. We'll see how that's looking. And he's looking pretty good. So there you have um, some very nice stylized eyes that uh, are very commonly used by by a lot of very big uh, uh, production houses and it's not a not an easy task but the principles 
Um, uh, you have to adhere to those principles fairly strictly. Um, some of the things that we included um, to sort of match that look that is now um, so common that, that to stray from it, you're left with something that doesn't, doesn't quite work. Um, we have a concave shape for the iris where, where it sort of angles in, in from the eyeball. Um, we've got a cornea that is on a slightly different um, ellipse to the main eyeball. Uh, we've got a, um, a pupil. And remembering that we, we have pupil control where we can, we can really play with that pupil now and, and, um, and dilate the pupils and, and include it in the animation. And any time you're bringing control to the animation, then you're ahead of the game. So we've also done some nice, um, some nice controllers for the eyes for the look at, and also for the, um, also for the eyelids, all linked back to our master eye controller back here, and. That's probably enough for you to get started doing some testing, doing some uh, playing around, familiarizing yourself with uh, some of the more, more common principles of animation with eyes, um, for blinking, for, for working out what your timing uh, looks like for blinking and things like that. And hopefully in the future we're going to take this character to every level of rigging um, so that we ultimately have a character that we can move ahead in other tutorials and do some... Um, animation. Um, we'd like we'd like to probably put him through some walk and run cycles, uh, and then maybe some action uh, cycles, and uh, also incorporate the character in in a scene, uh, interacting with some scene elements and and those sorts of things. And we'll probably uh, explore some biped rigging. Uh, biped being the character studio um, prepackaged. Uh, bipedal animation system that, that comes with 3D Studio Max. But I think I'd like to also go through a custom rig for this character as well and show you how easy it is to custom rig a character. And the beauty of custom rigging and having that knowledge is that you have a greater understanding of how biped works and, uh, and or how any animation or rigging package out of the box works because you have a basic knowledge. You've got a good working knowledge of how bones work and pivot points and constraints and links and and inverse kinematics or IK um, as opposed to forward forward kinematics. Um, I think I think it'd be well worth us going through that process. So get used to seeing our, our little little friend Zach here. Um, he's probably going to make some repeat appearances in some of my tutorials. And uh, as we move forward um, into other areas in 3D Studio Max. So that's our eye uh, rigging, eye building, eye material tutorial for, uh, for the moment. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. And until next time, bye for now.